Okay, we're going to take a look at the homework uh, for lesson number four here, which is uh, sine, cosine, and tan. Uh, biggest thing to remember here is our little acronym, so -ka toa We'll reference that quite a bit as we move through uh, our trigonometry here. So, first question, uh, use a scientific calculator to find each value. So here we're looking at sides. So we're looking at lot sides or side length here. We do not want to use shift, so no shift. Do not hit shift on your calculator, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our calculator, we're gonna make sure it's in our proper mode, just make sure you don't see a little RAD at the bottom there, that signals radians, we want it in degrees. So we're gonna just type in sign, and then we'll type in the number. Okay, perfect. So for A, I got the value of 0 0.669. For B, we'll do the same thing, sine 88. I got 0 0.99. And then sine 45, it's gonna give me 0 0.707. Sorry, that actually should be D and G. Perfect. Now, the next one here, we're looking at angle. And as soon as you see angle, alarm bells should go off in your head, and you should start thinking, I need to use shift. If you see angle, use shift. It should say, now we should be looking at sine negative 1 or cos negative 1, whenever we're trying to figure out angles. Okay? So for the first one, instead of just using sine, I'm going to go shift sine, so I see that little negative 1 on my calculator, 0.6092. And this angle was 37.5 degrees. Uh, the next one is 0.77777, and that was 51 degrees. And cos, you can do the exact same thing, shift cos negative 1, 0.5736, and we get 54.9 degrees, or 55 degrees if you round. Okay? Good, so we know what we're doing. Now we can move to actually applying this to our triangles. I'm just gonna box this off. And now we'll take a look at uh, number three. So number three says find x to the nearest 10th of a centimeter. So here's what we need to do with all of these questions. First thing we need to do is we need to label our triangle. So here's our angle of interest. So based on that, we can start labeling our triangle. We know this is our hypotenuse. We know this side is our adjacent, and we know this side is our opposite. So. If we look at so ka toa, we need to figure out, okay, well, what do we need? We need the opposite. And since we need the opposite, that means we can only use this one or this one. Ka, C-A-H, doesn't solve for opposite. It's no good to us. We need to figure out our opposite. And now the only question is, what do we have? Well, we have our hypotenuse. So which one of these two have our hypotenuse? This one. So what are we using? We're gonna be using sine. So let's set up our little formula over here. So we'll have sine, and then we put our angle, so our angle is 51, equals our opposite over hypotenuse. And so sine 51 equals our opposite, which is x over hypotenuse, which is 33, and we need to isolate um, for x, so we can just cross multiply. We'll just turn this into a little fraction here, and we'll end up multiplying both sides by 33. So we get 33 times sine 51 equals x. Here, we are solving for a side. This means no shift. We don't want to use shift here. So you would just take your calculator, don't hit that shift button, and we'll go 33 times sine 51, and that will be 25.65 equals x. So we found our side length. Okay, for b, so this was a, for b, let's take a look. 
So B is actually the exact same thing. The triangle looks the exact same, just with different numbers. Um, so you should be able to do that. I will give you the answer though. You'll end up typing in 12 sine 42, and this x value will end up being 8.03. Okay, and if you look at four, well look at this. They are all the exact same, just with different numbers. So this x value will also be very easy for you to figure out. You're in with nine sine times 22, and that will give you 3.37. It says to one decimal place, so I should make that 3.4. Okay, so now let's jump to number five, which I will do right down here. Five says we're gonna to need to find a triangle and it's got X, Y, Z. So let's draw our little right angle triangle. And now it says angle X is gonna be 90 degrees. So here's our X. Angle Z is gonna be 51. And we don't know what Y is, but we know what X, Y is, which is 15. And we're trying to figure out what is Y, Z. So here is what we are trying to figure out. So what do we have? What do we know? Well, we know if we label this triangle, which is what I'm gonna do now, this is our angle of interest, so this is gonna be our hypotenuse, this is gonna be our opposite, this is our adjacent. What two things do we have, or what two things are interested to us? Well, we have our opposite, we need our hypotenuse. And if you look at SOHCAHTOA, which one has the O and the H? Well, of course, that's sine. So we'll end up using sine here. So we're gonna use sine of our angle, 51, equals opposite over hypotenuse, so sine, 51 equals our opposite, which is 15, over our hypotenuse, which we don't know, so I'll just call it x. And then we can just end up cross multiplying, so we'll just put that over one, cross multiply, cross multiply, we end up with x times sine 51 equals 15. That is no good to us, we need to isolate for x, so we'll divide both sides by sine 51. Those are gonna cancel out, and we get x equals 15 over sine 51. So on your calculator, we're not solving for an angle. So we will 15 divided by sine 51. You're going to get x equals 19.3, not degrees, oh my goodness. You're just going to get x equals 19.3 for our sine. Awesome. Okay, 8. A little bit different here. So now we have, for 8, I'm just going to do it down here. A five meter long ladder is leaning up against the side of the barn. It reaches 4.2 meters up the side of the barn wall. So here, we have our ladder, and it's leaning up against the wall. So picture this being our ladder right here. So our ladder is five, and it reaches 4.2 meters up the barn wall. So it says, find the angle the ladder makes with the ground. So that is this angle here, which we will call x. So let's label this thing based on this, here is our hypotenuse, of course. Here is our adjacent. It's touching the angle, and here is our opposite. So what do we have? Well, here what we have is our opposite hypotenuse. We're going to end up using sine. So let's go ahead and use sine. So we have sine x, and I'm just going to make this a little smaller so I can actually read it. Much better. Sine x equals opposite 4.2 over hypotenuse, which is 5. And if you do that in your calculator, sine x equals 4.2 over 5. Okay. So 0 0.84. Here we are solving for an angle, which means shift. You must use negative 1. So we're going to get sine negative 1 x, or really how that's going to be written, is x equals sine negative 1, 0 0.84. You do not need to write that line that I just wrote. It's okay if you just put it right in your calculator and just give me the angle for x. So what you can do there, shift sine negative 1, 0.84, gives you an angle of 57.14 degrees. Perfect. So 9, Ron is building a skateboard ramp for his granddaughter Alexis. He wants the ramp to rise at an angle of 12 degrees. He wants it to rise vertically 0.5. How long is the ramp going to be? So 
you picture the ramp looking something maybe like this. He wants it to rise 0 0.5. He wants it to also rise at an angle of 12. So here is what our looks like. We need to figure out this. So if we label our triangle, here's our adjacent, here's hypotenuse, here's our opposite. This looks like sine to me because we need our opposite and hypotenuse. So we'll have sine 12 equals opposite, which is 0 0.5 over our hypotenuse, which is x, and then we're going to end up switching these two things around. So we'll have x equals 0 0.5 over sine 12. Remember, don't hit shift. We do not want to do that at all. Sine 12, and this gives me 2.4. Perfect. Okay. So last one for this says the hypotenuse of a right triangle, so let's just draw our right triangle, is 17.9 centimeters. So how long is the side opposite an angle that measures 27? So here's our 27. We're going to be looking at what is this, this opposite. So when we label our triangle, we have adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take sine. 27 equals x over I hypotenuse, which is 17.9, which will end up being x equals 17.9 times sine 27. And if we take out our calculator and we do this, 17.9 times sine 27, x equals 8.1. Perfect. What's the measure of the third angle in this triangle? Well, that's nice and easy. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? Okay. Um, that's easy because we know that all the angles need to add up to 180. So for part B, if everything needs to add up to 180, we can say, okay, well, if we know it starts at 180, we can take away the 90 degree angle that's already there. We can take away the 27 angle that's already there. And whatever's left is going to be our missing angle. So 180 minus 90 minus 27 is going to give me 63. Okay, so that's our first answer. That's our second answer. And then our third answer we can actually solve using Pythagorean theorem if we wanted to. Um, or we could use cosine, uh, cosine or we could use sine. I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem for that. So let's just update our triangle here. We have 17.9. And we said this side was 8.1, we just need to find this side. So here, we're going to end up using c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So the 17.9 squared equals a squared, which is 8.1 squared plus b squared. Swing that over, and we end up with 17.9 squared, which is, let's see, 320.4. 4 minus 8.1 squared, which is 65.6 equals b squared. So when we take those two and subtract them, we get 254.8 equals b squared. So we'll square root both sides, square root both sides, and this will give us a final answer of b equaling, let's see, 254.8, 15.9. Awesome. Looking good. Okay, so we got that all settled. Lots of work with sine. Let's move on to doing some work with tan. So using a scientific calculator, we can find each value to four decimal places. No problem. We can make that happen quite easily Indeed. So we're looking here at specifically A and C. Remember, here we're not looking for an angle. We don't need to use our shift key. So we're just going to use 10, 28. This gives me 0 0.5317. 10, 45 gives me 1. Okay. Find the measure of each angle. So here we're going to have to use our shift key. So we'll use shift, 10, 0.3443. Okay, let's shift 10. 0.3443 gives me 19 degrees. 
so we're going to the nearest degree. And the other one we're going to use shift tan 28.6363. It's 88 degrees. Excellent. Okay, number three. So for number three, we need to start off by labeling our triangle. Here we have our opposite. Here we have our hypotenuse. Here we have our adjacent. We need to figure out what our opposite is here. So if you look at Sokotoa, what involves O and A? Well, of course, tan does. So we're going to use tan. 58 equals opposite over adjacent. And tan 58 equals our opposite, which is X over our adjacent, which is 36. And then we'll just multiply that up, both sides by 36. So we get 36 times tan 58 equals x, giving us, let's see what we get with that, 36 times tan 58, x equals 57.6. OK. Uh, next one, we're going to have the exact same situation on our hands. We need to label this. We have our opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. I'm just going to use a thicker marker here. And so we have tan 42 equals our opposite, which is 46, over our adjacent, which is x. And what we're going to end up doing is cross multiplying. Eventually, these two things are going to flip. But I'll just show you how that looks. So we're going to multiply that up, multiply that up. We get x times tan 42 equals 46. So we'll divide this side by tan 42. We'll divide this side by tan 42. Those are going to cancel out. And you get x equals 46 over tan 42. Throw that directly into your calculator. And we end up with 51 as our final answer. OK. And our last question, number six, in a right triangle. So here's our right triangle. The side opposite an angle that measures 34, so here's our 34, is 12. How long is the side adjacent? So this is what we're trying to figure out. So if we label this triangle, we have our adjacent, we have our opposite, we have our hypotenuse. What's the appropriate thing to use? Well, opposite and adjacent is what we care about. We are going to need to use tan. So we'll use tan here, so tan 34 equals our opposite over adjacent, 12 over x, and we know those things are going to end up switching once we cross multiply and divide. So we get x equals 12 over tan 34, and that is going to give me a final answer of 17.8. And that is a little bit of sine, tan, and cosine.